You've been very critical of Ethereum over 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 the years throughout your writings. Um, how do you see Dero, D E R O, uh, coming in and maybe taking the place of Ethereum? I think that um, I, I I continue to be really critical of Ethereum, and in fact, I'm gonna I'm probably gonna be expressing a bit more detail on that in the near future. Will um, something I'm working on. Um, with in a bit more in a bit more detail, um, I think that like a, as a smart contract network, Dero is to some extent still vulnerable to some of the criticisms that I have of Ethereum. But the, but it's got two big things going for it. The first one is that it's got a long ways to go. So you know when something is worth you know. 300 million, it's a lot easier to think it's fairly valued or undervalued than when it's worth 300 billion, right? So it ultimately comes down to value as well. And there's an, there's an old saying, there's no such thing as a bad as a bad asset, just bad prices, right? It's nothing wrong with the asset, just if you pay $100 for it versus if you pay $1 for it, that that's the, the part that matters. And I think Darrow, because it's still so small in terms of value appreciation, e- even taking into account some of the, the the fundamental knocks that I have on the economics of smart contract platforms, it's still got a massive way to go. So I think that's a huge one. Um, but the second one I think is even more important, which is why I'm so constructive on it. We're talking about privacy for financial transactions. And I think that particularly for, De- think about DeFi, right? DeFi has been the killer app for Ethereum. It has been, and you could argue, you could argue that in more recent days, it's been, um, it's been NFTs um, to some extent. I think that DeFi is still going to be the leader, uh, or has been the leader in terms of certainly putting it on the map and, and blowing it up from you know a very small, relatively small project to something worth hundreds of billions of dollars. In Monero and private and pirate chain, there's an argument to be made that when people say, "Oh, it's private." Oh, is that for illegal transactions? Is that for you know buying drugs? I don't know if I want to be associated with that. We think that's wrong. We think that's the wrong way to approach it. But that is how some people view it, at least initially when they when they see it. When it comes to when it comes to financial transactions, though, saying all right, I want to I want to stake, I want to do lending, I want to earn yield. Do you really want your financial transactions, not just you know using money on a day-to-day basis, but actually your your full strategy? Do you really want to broadcast that to the world? Financial privacy is, I think, something that everyone can understand very easily. Saying if I'm doing all these transactions, I don't really like the idea of publishing it. You know, if 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 the IRS changes the tax code um, and decides they want to look back at the records and penalize people. For things, and I'm not saying that they're going to do this. Um, don't certainly don't have a crystal ball, and you could argue that it wouldn't happen. But, but the fact of the matter is that um, you can always go back on on Ethereum. You can always go back on Bitcoin and any other public chain forever and see what everything that people did. And and there's no there's no ability to ever turn that off, right? So what you did three years ago on Ethereum, it's still there. You know, if if someone is critical of you and saying, you know, we don't think you should have done that. Now, whether they can go back and punish you for something in the past is a different question, but but it's a, it's a realistic prospect that they can certainly certainly try. And I think that the notion then of being able to do all these transactions in a way where it's it's uh, it's your business and no one else's, and that um, you're you you you're in control of that, and you as a responsible entity, look, it's on you to to pay your taxes and to report everything appropriately. But in terms of publishing it so that the world can see it. Um, and can use that data against you and mine it and, and harvest that data to build your profile, right? And never mind doing even more nefarious things against you. I think that's something that will be very easy for people to appreciate. I mean, I honestly can't think of a single reason why if I said to you as a, as a DeFi investor, hey, here are these two systems. You can do everything you want on this one over here, or you can do everything on that you want on this one over there. And the only difference is one of them is broadcast to the world and the other one is private and only you can see it. Who on earth would pick the first one? I can't, right. think, I can't think of a, a, I can't even imagine why anybody would. And I think understanding that is a lot easier than dealing with um, some of the negative stigma that's still associated with Monero or pirate chain uh, in that sort of being used for 
for dark web transactions.